So today we're going to be exploring why it is so many of us have anxiety around making decisions. We are not taught to think about the way that we think. We're not taught to question why we do what we do. Most of us just react to whatever data shows up in our mental field. And we never stop to question what is showing up, why it's showing up, and how it got there. If we fear making a decision about a relationship we are in, we do not routinely question why we are afraid of making a decision. Most of us worry about making a decision and then we feel the physical response to that fear in our bodies as stress and eventually suffer from anxiety related issues. We fail to recognize what this habit of thought is costing us in our adult lives. If we understood that many of us fear making decisions because there is simply a template in our mind that has taught us that what we feel is insignificant, we would then understand why we find ourselves worrying about making decisions. I'm going to say that again. If we understood that many of us fear making decisions because there is a template in our mind that has taught us that what we feel is insignificant. We would then understand why we find ourselves worrying about making decisions. When we understand that the way we think is the result of what we observed and not the product of being taught how to think in a healthy way, It becomes easier to understand the concept that the subconscious mind is essentially a computer that has been downloaded with a specific computer language. We teach our children to tie their shoes. We teach our children about stranger danger. We teach our children arithmetic, but we don't teach them how to think. We don't teach them about the most powerful ability on planet Earth, and that is the ability to question the way that you think. Just like computers, which are subject to what data and programs are downloaded into its motherboard by a programmer, children's innocent virgin minds, including yours, are no different. Children learn how to process the world by observing the people around them. What did you observe as a child? What did you hear? What did you feel? What did your parents do around you? What did you observe? What was downloaded? How did they treat you when you cried? Did you feel attuned to? Did you learn to believe that your feelings mattered? Were you encouraged to master your environment? Or were you guilted for spilling the milk or making a mistake? Through consistency and observation, children are brainwashed to believe what their caretakers believe. In this way, a child's mind is truly not his or her own. Instead, the way a child processes the world, the way a child processes their senses, The way a child processes information, which includes data he or she experiences in relation to the self, healthy or not, is the handiwork of programmers. So how caretakers, significant others and teachers, siblings and family members, how these people treated you is data. You develop a sense of self, healthy or not, based on how other people treated you when you were an innocent. Tremendous self-doubt is a characteristic of an adult child who has grown up in a dysfunctional home that was void of authentic love, communication, and validation. If your brain holds templates that have taught you that what you need is insignificant, then it would be almost impossible for you to make healthy choices on your own behalf until this template is confronted and dismantled. That is your right. You may have been programmed to be successful at a career, 
but you may have been taught that your emotions are insignificant. In this case, you might be someone who is highly functional at work, but you may feel insecure in your personal relationships. And no amount of money or prestige is ever going to help you develop the esteem of self to feel good about yourself until you get to the bottom of why it is you self-sabotage. In this case, how you behave, think about how you behave, learn to observe yourself, how you behave in any given situation as an adult will always be the result of the templates that have been created by your childhood programming. If you do not believe that you possess the power to change, it is my hope and intention to help you shift out of that victim-like posture and into a possibly more victorious perception of self. Just like any thought process that has been instilled in your mind, dear one, it will take time, it will take patience and repetition to override the patterns that are already within the subconscious mind. But you must know that it is possible to reprogram the subconscious mind. The mind is the most amazing processor there is and there will ever be. You must become the programmer of your life. You must decide what thoughts you think. You must override the propensity to wake up, to have anxiety, and to just sit in anxiety. You have to develop the faith that if you sit in a meditation, if you listen to a positive podcast, if you journal about goals, you must believe that through repetition, you can override your mind's propensity to think a frightening thought and to chew on that thought, to milk that thought. You must learn to believe, you must have faith in this idea that you can change what you think Just this morning, I woke up not feeling that well. I listened to a positive podcast, 10 minutes, and I began to shift my thoughts. I remembered that I have the power, that I can change my thinking. I can wallow in fear, or I can think about something else. I can remember the power of my mind. I could think a positive thought. I could set a goal, and I can set an intention. And I began to feel better. So my thoughts actually changed my physiology. As you discipline yourself to the practices like meditation and journaling and changing your thoughts, you will absolutely begin to flourish in ways you could never have imagined. As veils begin to lift from your eyes, the colors in nature will seem brighter and more illumined. You might begin to notice that you sleep more soundly and feel lighter in your being. Your skin tone may improve, along with your hair and nails. Your digestive system may begin to become more regulated, and brain fog may disappear completely. You may notice that your relationships with others are improving, or that some relationships begin fading away. You may notice a sudden desire to organize your closet and drawers. You may discover a certain urge to save money and to take better care of your car. All of these new and exciting acts of self-responsibility are a byproduct of taking more responsibility for what you think, for what you say, and what you do. Namaste. Until next time.